Welcome all. I'm Raj from uh, Hyde Australia, Development Manager for Mobile Hydraulics. Uh, thanks for joining me today. And I'll be talking about our new mobile load sense valve, the LX6, specially designed for mobile applications. The LX6 load independent valve technology aims to provide you with the best end user control, meeting requirements for high productivity with optimum safety and minimum emissions. The LX6 is a new generation load sense valve developed for precise controllability, flexible system architecture, and high efficiency. Some of the topics that will be covered in today's session and much more will be covered in the upcoming webinars. The load sensing theory, the different types of load sense valves, why select the LX6 valve, the LX6 modular structure, uh, some of the competitors in the local market, and an application example. But before we start, what is load sensing? It is simply a technology that adjusts pressure and flow to match system requirements, more so supply on demand, and can be created either using a constant or variable displacement pump. Now let's review this concept mathematically. The equation below shows the relationship between pressure and flow, which can be further simplified to pressure is directly proportional to delta P, the pressure drop across a fixed orifice. So what that simply means is as the pressure drop across an orifice increases, your flow increases. And as the pressure drop decreases, your flow decreases. So how do we make or, or maintain a constant flow across a fixed orifice? We make the delta P equal to a constant by introducing a pressure compensator in the system. And the value of the delta P is equal to the spring constant of the pressure compensator. So this is how you maintain a constant flow, by making the delta P constant. This is an example of a, a simple load tense valve with a variable displacement pump. The load sense valve has pressure compensators to maintain a constant flow as discussed here. The next thing is, how do we feed the signal back to the pump? So the, the, the weight pressure or the load sense signal from each section is fed into the shuttle valve, which then feeds the highest load pressure into the pump controller to maintain the or to maintain or regulate the pressure and flow. So this is a basic, simple load sensing system. You have your pressure compensator, you have your load sense signal line feeding into the pump controller and that meets your or matches your flow and pressure requirements. There are different types of load sensing valves. The most common one used in the market today is the pre-compensated valve. Hereby, the compensator is located in front of the spool, in front of the main spool. The pressure drop or the delta P across the spool is determined by the compensator. And again, this is the, the value of the spring determines your delta P. Some of the advantages, it allows load sense pressure limitation in the A and B ports. The other, the other type of uh, valve is the post compensated valve. Hereby, if you can see hereby, the compensator is located after the main spool. In the pre-compensation, it is before the main spool in the post compensation, so pre and post. Post is after the spool. The delta P across the spool is determined by the load sense spring inside the pump, or basically in our terminology or basic terminology is the load sense standby pressure. Again, mathematically, the pressure drop across the spool is equal to the system pressure minus the margin pressure or the standby pressure minus the pressure of the compensator spring to maintain that delta P. Some of the advantages of post compensated valve, it allows flow sharing. For example, backhaul loaders. When the demand exceeds supply, all the function starts working at a reduced speed just to maintain that functionality. Whereas in a pre-compensated valve, some of the function may cease to operate. As, uh, as the common theory goes, 
the flow will take the path of least resistance. So this is basically a very simple overview of a pre-compensation and post-compensation theory. A quick overview of the LX6 uh, technical data. You can have one to 10 waking sections in a single configuration. It is an inlet flow of 250 liters per minute and the service ports are rated to 180 liters per minute with nominal pressures of 350 bar for the P port or the pump connection port and the A and B ports on the wax section are rated to 350 bar with an intermittent pressure of 420 bar. It allows return flows of up to 300 liters per minute from the A and B port to the tank port due to the highly optimized internal galleries and also the, the flow doesn't have to go back through the pressure compensator. Uh, compatible with uh, mineral oil to Dean standards and other fluids uh, with requests from Hyrick. Now comes the big question. Why select the LX6 valve for your application requirements? Because it offers a very high resolution in comparison to the competitor product in the market. The LX6 offers 10 millimeter spool displacement in comparison to the seven millimeter spool displacement offered by our competitors. The additional three millimeter spool displacement allows precise controllability. So this region here, the extra three millimeters allows precise controllability. For example, during machinery startups, giving you enhanced motion control. It's basically like a very soft start. So this gives you a very nice and a very gradual progressive movement. Therefore, you don't have to, to spend a lot of lots of money on expensive controllers to achieve this level of controllability. So it's very basic controllers and you, you have the same resolution. Therefore, we can say that the LX6 offers 40% better resolution in comparison to our competitors in the market, best in its class. The LX6 offers optimum flow stability. For example, if you look on the screen on the graph, you can maintain a constant flow of one liter per minute, coming out from a 180 liter per minute spool, whilst varying the system pressure. So whilst the system pressure is changing, you still have one liter per minute coming out. This shaker shows here how the testing was conducted which demonstrates that the pressure changes in the system has zero influence on the flow due to the highly optimized and cleverly designed pressure compensator in the LX6. Again, the best in its class. The LX6 offers much higher power density. What is high power density? It means that large amounts of power can be transmitted from a relatively small component. The LX6 has a much smaller footprint as outlined in red, as you can see on the screen, as outlined in red, in comparison to the Rexroth M412, the Huawei PL5, or the PVG32, or many other valves in the market. For example, the PVG32 has an output power of 83 kilowatts in comparison to 140 kilowatts of power from the LX6. This shows that the LX6 offers 40% more output power with a similar or slightly smaller footprint. Again, the best in its class, 40% more in its class. The, the LX6 offers a modular design structure, allowing multiple configurations to meet your exact application requirements. There are many different types of inlet plates for constant or variable displacement pumps. Many versions of the work sections and actuators and multiple types of end plates for easier customization and faster delivery of the LX6 valve. Now a closer look at the LX6 uh, inlet plates, which are also part of the AMR program, which means the Australian market range. The most basic inlet plate is the CL17 used with a variable displacement pump 
and it doesn't come with a pressure adjustment spool. The ULF-17F is an open center inlet for fixed displacement pump. The UL-17P is a closed center inlet, <coughs> excuse me, for variable displacement pump. They both come with a pressure adjustment spool, which acts as a bypass in the open center inlet and acts as a main relief in the closed center inlet. In an event, if the controllers on the on the pump file, for argument's sake, your pressure compensator on the pump files, then this comes into play. The, the LX6 program also offers many types of work sections. B6 is the most common or the most basic variant, but still comes with a pressure compensator. The CS6 is the next variant, comes with a facilities for shock and suction, and also has a single load sense pressure limitation valve. The LS6 is the most premium version that comes with the facilities for shock and suction valves, an individual load sense pressure limiting valve for the A and B ports. This is a cross section of a LX6 work section, showing some, some critical uh, components. This here is your shock valve. This is your shock and suction valve. This is your electrohydraulic actuator. This is the main spool. This is your pressure compensator. This is the pressure compensator spring. As you can see, it is very easily accessible. And this spring here maintains the neutral position. So this is your basic uh, work section. Now a closer look at the LX6 work section features. The LX6 offers, program offers many different types of spools, standard or special. For example, the CT and the CC spools are designed with a 20 bar return orifice for applications requiring back pressure in the return line. Generally, like when you're using a radial piston motor, they, they need a, a back pressure of 15 to 20 bar. So, so you can use this spool without having any additional valves in your system. All the sections come with a pressure compensator, which maintains a constant flow regardless of load pressure. So this keeps on maintaining a constant flow, regardless of changes of pressure in the system. You can easily change the spring settings on the pressure compensator to achieve the best spool resolution. So there, there are different types of uh, springs that gives you a different delta to achieve your spool resolution. It has options for LS special limitation to individually control the pressure on the A and B ports. Ideal when you have multiple wake sections operating simultaneously at different pressures. So you can adjust, individually adjust the pressure on each section, a very neat feature. Has facilities for shock and suction valves, or, or some people know it as port relief and anti-cavitation valve. The port relief valves have a fixed setting from 50 to 380 bar and protects the system against pressure spikes. That's your port relief and anti-cav. And the anti-cavitation check prevents cavitation. That's a symbol for anti-cavitation. The LX6 program offers many different types of end plates. The most basic one is the ER1, which is used with mechanical actuators. So you've got a mechanical lever, but can also be used with hydraulic or electrohydraulic actuation with external pilot oil supply in the seaport. So this is the most basic one. The ER2 is used with electrohydraulic actuation. It comes with a pressure reducing valve for the pilot oil supply. It also has an external load sense port, so you can connect additional valves in series. Also offers an option for manual shutoff valve for pilot supply. So these are all the features. The ER27 is similar to the ER2 with an additional P and T ports. So if you can see in the schematic, that's a P and T port. By using this inlet, you can increase the inlet flow by 15%. As we discussed earlier in this uh, in, in, in the introduction, the inlet flows are up to 250 liters, but by using this inlet plate, you can increase the flow to about 280 to 290 liters per minute. Again, a very neat feature. The LX6 can be supplied with a 
many flangible auxiliary functions for intelligent control architecture. For example, the load sense unloading valve, this is a load sense unloading valve, can be flanged to the inlet for additional safety so you can dump the load sense signal. Or the electroproportional pressure relief valve that can be flanged to the work section for remote pressure control. There are many options available, so please contact HIDEC for your exact application requirements and we'll only be more than happy to assist you. Now let's have a look at some of the competitor products in the market. The Danfoss PVG32 with a work section flow of only 100 liters per minute. The, DP, the valve oil DPC-130 is also rated 100 liters per minute, and I'm talking about the work section flow, the maximum work section flow. The Brevini HPV-41 has a rated flow of 130 liters per minute. The Parker L90 LS has, has a rated flow of 90 liters per minute. The Rexroad M4 test 12 up to 130 liters per minute. And the, and the LX6 has a work section flow of 180 liters per minute. Therefore, we can conclusively say that the LX6 offers 44% higher flow capacity against the PVG32 and the DPC130. 27% 27 better than the HPV41, 50% better than the L90 LS, and 27% better than the Rexroad M412. Again, the best in its class. And you have to keep reminding yourself that the footprint of the LX6 is slightly smaller than the valves in discussion here. This is an example of a hydraulic system uh, on a refuse truck. It has a tandem variable displacement pump and hereby we used our PPV100M mobile pump. So basically what the system does is the, is the front pump feeds into a single section LX6, which then feeds into our band axis uh, piston motor that drives the 60 kilowatt vacuum pump. The rear pump feeds into the four section LX6. As you can see on the left of the screen, this is where the LX6 is mounted on the truck, very compact. And this drives the mulching motor, which is again on the left-hand side of the screen, this is the mulching motor. So the LX6 drives the, the mulching motor and also runs all the other functionalities. Very less number of components. So this is just a basic hydraulic system. So we can say that the LX6 together with our PPV 100 amp pump offers the mo a very compact and highly efficient load sensing system. So if you have any requirements, please contact HIDEC. We'll have a lot of uh, webinars coming up on different topics and different subjects. So please feel, feel free to, to go to our website and, uh, and, and, and register yourself. And also you can follow us on, all, on these social media. And please, if you have any, and if you have any other questions or if you need any additional information, uh, you're most welcome to contact us and we'll try to assist you uh, with, all your, with, with all your inquiries. So once again, thanks for your time and thanks for listening to me. All have a pleasant day. Thank you.